Hello and welcome to the first lesson in our course on advanced material selection. Today we'll be reintroducing performance indices and introducing the concept of using multiple objectives during the ranking stage of our selection. In this series of ANSYS innovation courses, we're focused on material selection or the process of choosing a material during the design process. We heavily rely on the Ashby selection methodology as a way for us to logically identify a design's function, constraints, and objectives, and use this information to choose the best material possible. If you're unfamiliar with the methodology, I highly recommend that you check out the second course in this series titled Basic Systematic Material Selection. Those of you who have watched all three previous courses will be familiar with this, an Ashby chart, a way for us to visualize material properties and compare individual materials and material families with one another. You'll also be familiar with these, performance indices, a single material property or group of properties that represents the performance of our design. We can see an example performance index here. We have Young's modulus to the one third power over density. This is the performance index for our, our longboard example at the end of course three. We saw that there were multiple ways to visualize our performance indices, such as a selection line on an Ashby chart. But we had mentioned that performance indices are a single equation, which can be plotted on a single axis, like shown. Well, why is this useful? Well, we can then compare two objectives on one chart during the ranking stage of our selection methodology. But why would I want to do that? Well, in all of the examples that I've shown across our course series so far, we've only been looking at optimizing one performance objective for a given design, say, minimizing mass for a stiffness limited design. But what if I want to minimize both cost performance and mass performance for my stiffness limited design? Or say I'm operating in a strength limited design space and I want to minimize the ecological impact as well as the cost performance. Comparing multiple objectives with one another adds a layer of complexity to our selection, as often these objectives conflict with one another. Take for example our longboard from our performance index course. We mentioned at the end that cost could be an additional factor. We used this chart for our selection. Young's modulus on the y-axis, density on the x, with a selection line of slope 3. We had six materials left, pine, bamboo, plywood, oak, carbon fiber composites, and boron carbide. But our performance index is an equation that can be put entirely on the y-axis, as we mentioned earlier. Now we're simply looking for materials that maximize the performance on this axis. Easy. This has opened up our x-axis for us to plot another objective to compare. So we can just add price to this axis, right? Well, if we add price comparing to a performance index, we just get this chart, which is a bit hard to read. Our candidate materials have scattered values of our performance indices. For example, we find bad mass performance, but good cost performance in the upper left-hand corner. Conversely, there are materials that have good mass performance, but they're very expensive for what they deliver, so bad cost performance, in the lower right-hand corner. It's important not to look at just lowest density and lowest cost per kilogram when we're trying to find the best materials. If we do this, we're missing out on their ability to provide strength or stiffness fulfilling their function. That's what we have performance indices for. If we can't find a material that has the best performance index for both of our objectives, we need to find the best compromise between the two using trade-offs. And with that, we've come to the end of our lesson, where we've shown that performance indices are a key element in ranking during our selection methodology and showcase the complexity dealing with multiple objectives can add to this process. In our next lesson, we will show how to set up our selection charts to best address multiple objectives and look at the challenge of trade-offs. Thanks again for joining and I'll see you in the next one.